Hi everybody, hope you're well. Uh, today we'll take a look at a book titled Saturated Light uh, Silver Works uh, by Wolfgang Tillmans, published by Galerie Buchholz in collaboration with Koenig. Tom Hollert wrote, Something rises here, something has deposited itself there, while over there waits a depression, a groove. A grainy texture invites the touch, and then what must have been some sort of spatula scraped across the surface. There are cloudy areas, atmospheric transitions, blistering, graceful blurring, also friction marks, sharply torn edges, stains, spots, marks, rhythmic sequences, sometimes two streaks, horizontal, vertical, monochromes, yellow, red, blue, purple, at times matte, and others lustrous. Associations inevitably arise, a landscape, a horizon, a body of water, brickwork, geology, ecology, a chemistry lab, a green sun on an orange ground, pale pink spotted with black, a shadow, a clearing. Wolfgang Tillmans uh, produced the first of his silver works in 1992. Since then, these have developed into what is now a collection of over 200 events in the multidimensional photographic body. It is also a visual history of accidents, terminations, disturbances. Light, chemicals, salts, algae, plastics and metals have all been all involved, though not always at the same time. In addition to the mechanics and the physics of the interaction between film processing machine and silver nitrate coated paper. The artist involved himself in the process more at certain times and less at others. On one occasion he exposed sheets of blank and developed photo paper to light of various colors before feeding it into the processing machine, where, now beyond his control, the paper once again took on color. On another he allowed light, at times pulsating but also occasionally precisely regulated, to penetrate the cracks in the machine's paper feeder, thereby causing concentrated streaks of color to form across the images. Varying the intensity and duration of exposure created billowing, cloud-like fills of color, while exposing the paper to various different hues of light as it was fed into the machine produced spectacularly colorful images. It would therefore be wrong to say that the silver images are entirely free of any deliberate artistic intervention in their creation. The highly specific equation of this production does not allow for role of the artist to be bucketed. Tillmans keeps uh, the artistic hand in play throughout. But in doing so he acts less in the spirit of absolute sovereignty over means and motifs and much more as one member of a divergent and heterogeneous collective of actors, both organic and inorganic. What has developed over the years is a gallery of errors, a documentation of failure, an archive of rejects and refuse. Unusable under other conditions, these images would normally be destined to be thrown away. The fact that they were not, therefore, raises questions regarding the criteria and interests that led to their inclusion in Tillman's catalogue of works questions that seem all the more fundamental and urgent for their relevance to ideas regarding the site and status of authorship and of photography itself. For many agents meet and cross paths in the silver family. The processes that result in the individual sheets are cultural as well as material. They concerned the history and dispositive of photography, but also the behaviors of emulsions, of algae, of salts. To this extent, the works are not unusual, since it is hard to conceive of an artistic production without any material dimension to it. Here, however, artistic decisions concerning control over the events that produce the individual works and the process of decision-making that leads to one image being selected and another thrown away are in many ways conveyed through the autonomy and inner logic of the non-human protagonists involved. The focus here, Tillmans emphasizes, is not on the gestural, on the direct relationship between the body of the artist and that of the paper and its emulsion. 
Rather, it is an act of research into the misuse of a medium. This may be one reason for the strange and conspicuous absence of art-critical textual engagement with this group of works. Considered as a whole, silver seems to elude any categorization. The inventory of material facts and phenomena continually slides into that very process of meaning production that somehow seems distinctly inappropriate with regard to these images, both individually and in their entirety. Instead, one might ask how much space that a sheet of photo paper hold and offer, how much room for action, how much volume. What can occur in this world of chemicals and fibers, one seemingly so shallow, so flat, so smooth? What can appear there? The members of this family might have firmly secured their place in Tillman's catalogue raisonné, but they come across as misfits. Their appeal is a rather awkward one, and certainly not as obviously alluring as that of other groups of works. Their status seems unclear. They refuse easy classification. They break out of line and reassemble in their own formation. Tillmans generally hangs the silver pictures in the proximity of other camera-based photographs in his exhibitions, where they take on various functions, as a means of contrast, as impetus for reflection on the medium, an interruption, a foreign body. Only rarely does he isolate them, as in his 2013-14 exhibition Silver at the Galerie Buchholz in Berlin, or in the silver installations where he fills the walls with arrangements of small format, mostly monochrome works, salvaged from accidents or disturbances in the development process. The silver works often lead a double existence, as a small or medium format unique image and a photographic double, the latter scalable within the spectrum of formats the artist has defined for his practice. That for each individual large-scale silver work there exists a smaller unique that acts as its reference object pushes the group as a whole into its own ontological register. In this respect, it also distinguishes itself from the folded, creased and crinkled paper reliefs of the lighter works, which, in their sculptural singularity, remain untranslated into any other another format. In the case of the silver family, the unique element is the sheet of paper that was processed as a concrete material object by a developing machine or printer, a fate the silver works uh, naturally share with other images from uh, Tillman's oeuvre that are likewise printed on photo paper. But, unlike those works, here the sheets of paper are left as they are, with all their material traces of their maltreatment at the hands of exhausted chemicals, contaminated rollers, invasions of inappropriate light or mechanical elements. And in this state and in their uniqueness, each individual sheet is allowed, potentially at least, to live on. For factors such as insufficient fixing can cause uh, further changes in the material, in the composition of the components, at the micro level of the image. Every photographic documentation of a unique original silver image, every enlargement, therefore, only ever depicts it in a single state, ultimately datable to the millisecond, and so becomes uh, vibrating matter. With this, the object of reference enters a trajectory that takes it ever farther from its variously scalable doubles. It is the provisional result of a process that can never be repeated exactly, a modest triumph of analog image formation, save for the fact that it is not an image in the sense of a photographic representation. Where does the image drift when it is unimpeded by any gaze that wants to see something in it? Firstly, it can cease to be an image. Instead, pure materiality, the simple refusal to yield any further service in matters of representation or expression. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.